So, the Alien franchise is one of my favorite franchises of all time. Whether we talking about the Ellen Ripley trilogy, the AVP stuff that's just badass action, or the prequel stuff we've been getting for the last few years. It's safe to say this is my favorite sci-fi horror series. I like it so much so I get the books. Now some of them are movie tie-ins and some of them are isolated incident stories. And I think that the isolated incident stories are better. But having said that, there was one that I read that was even too much for me to handle. I'm talking about, I could literally only read this one time. I read it one time, all four issues, never again. It's called Aliens Labyrinth. Surprisingly, this story is on a lot of people's list for alien comics you should read. But for me, this is one of the creepiest horror stories I have ever read in my life. So, in this, an army colonel named Crespi and his team is ordered to investigate a secret research space station. There's been a lot of rumors and shit going on that's really drawing attention on the space station. Crespi meets the doctor in charge. His name is Dr. Church. And he's delving deep into xenomorph behavior and biology. He has a captive xenomorph that he's been studying and, and torturing and playing with. This man is literally psychotic and his methods are twisted. But I will admit it is interesting seeing the behavior of a captive xenomorph. To be honest, most of this story is actually very entertaining. But book three is when things take a gut-riching turn. That is when we get some backstory on Dr. Church. Now, typically in the movies, xenomorphs will sometimes take humans back to their nests and they will use them as hosts for the facehuggers to lay embryos inside of them. It's a bit disgusting and disturbing, but honestly, nothing really too bad. In Labyrinth, however, Dr. Church had a very different experience in the nest. This was a freaking nightmare in every sense of the word. You can tell that just by looking at these panels. The doctor describes the smell inside as being intolerable, an incomprehensible, loathsome miasma that raped one's soul through the lungs. Look, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, this is about to get crazy. Sit the fuck down, pay attention. If you're eating something, I would stop. The xenomorphs attach the doctor to the wall in the bowels of the hive with its mucus. They left him hanging there for nearly 50 hours as the stench of the place scorched his nose and eyes. And when the aliens finally did return, they came to feed him. The panels mixed with the doctor's dialogue as he recounts the story of everything that happened to him and his crew is all very disturbing. This is hell. But the part that really grossed me out was when the xenomorphs took the doctor to their breeding pens. There was a pregnant woman on the ground whose stomach was monstrously swollen and she delivered. She delivered several abominations. This book is so fucked up, man. And it gets more and more fucked up and disturbing as the doctor fights for his survival. There's some stuff in this I don't even want to mention. Honestly, I, I don't even want to talk about it. You'll have to read it for yourself. Let me explain something. First of all, the concept of a parasitic creature attaching itself to your face, sticking its tentacle down your throat and laying an egg in your chest is bad enough. But see, Labyrinth takes it like 20 steps further with its story and gruesome imagery. I honestly don't know if I would recommend this one. I'm being dead ass. I don't think this would be one that I would recommend. It just wasn't for me. This was a nightmarish inferno story. It really was. I like scary movies. I really do. I like nightmares. But when you have blood and gore, and then you combine that with molestation, torture, rape, that's when I get uncomfortable. And it's like, this isn't for me. I, I can't look at this again, ever. And unfortunately, that's exactly what Labyrinth did. Some people think that the movies are too much. I would much rather watch the movies than reread Aliens Labyrinth. The comics have no censorship whatsoever. So they can do anything practically and show practically anything. And they really, they really took advantage of that. This has no Comics Code Authority issue on it. 
this has no censorship. So they can do anything and they can say anything and tell whatever kind of gruesome story that they want to tell. And they really took advantage of that. And it just, it was too much for me. I read it. I read all four issues. I, I don't even remember how it ended. Um, it's not something I would ever reread. I have it and I have it in my collection, but it's not something I would ever come back to. I'm making this video because, you know, with Alien Romulus coming out, I just wanted to talk about the grossest alien story from this franchise that I've ever read. The doctor did make it out, however. Dr. Church, he survived this shit. He was in the nest dealing with everything that he was dealing with for 43 days. And by the end of it, he made it out and he made it out with a dead embryo in his chest. A facehugger got him. And honestly, after reading everything that happened to him, I would much rather have died than to be alive and get out. I would much rather have gotten killed. One of his teammates blew themselves up and he was like, he, he was a lucky bastard. You, yeah, yeah, I would, I would much rather blow myself up than to have to go through what he went through. I would much rather die. Guys, this was the worst, creepiest, most uncomfortable, disturbing alien story I have ever read. Aliens Labyrinth. Like I said, for most people who collect alien comics, they have this on their list as one you should read. This is not one that's on my list, and I don't really understand why it's on their list, but whatever. If you want to check this out, I'll post a link down below where you can read all four issues right now for free. Don't say I didn't warn you, you know, but if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.